Hey there, Designaholics. I'm Carrie Lawless, and on today's Designaholic DIY, I'm going to show you how to make stunning art on a budget. Stay with me. The technique that we're going to be using today is called paint pouring and we're going to make some contemporary art and I'm going to be using neutral colors so hopefully you'll get an idea of how to do this in a way that it can go with today's modern color palette. So um, anyway the first thing we're going to do is talk about the materials that we're using. This is the magic solution right here. This is called Floetrol and we're going to be mixing one part paint using craft paints um, and three parts Floetrol. Now, the craft paints that I'm using, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me what brand it is. It really just matters the color. If you're wanting to use house paint, I think that would work as well. I haven't done it, but my thought is that anything that's acrylic or latex should be fine. So definitely give that a try. Um, we have various size squeeze bottles. So you're gonna need empty squeeze bottles. We should have links in the description for everything and I'll list the colors that I'm using as well. So just check that link below. Oh, speaking of that, um, just making sure you've subscribed to the channel because you're not gonna wanna miss any of our great stuff that's coming up. So have you subscribed? Oh, well, let me give you just a second. Go ahead, it just takes a second. Done? Okay, good. Let's move on. All right, so um, we have the empty bottles, now you'll notice I have three different sizes. This, this, and this. And the reason why is because I use the most of this, second most of this, and the least of these colors. So um, these are a little more intense, so I use less of them. You'll also notice that um, on the darker, like the brown and the black, I like to use these fine tip uh, tops and you basically just unscrew the existing top and put this on and it enables you to make a fine line kind of like you would with a you know a fine line marker um, anyway all right so i think oh the other thing is make sure to put a label on every one of your paints that's not going to wash off because um, it gets really confusing when they're in these bottles as to what you've done so um I mean, at least for me, I like to be able to go back and see what colors that I've used. It all starts kind of running together with no labels on it. Especially the Floetrol and the white, they look the same. Floetrol looks white when you pour it out. As it dries, it dries totally clear. So um, anyway, and I use this Brother Key Touch Labeler. It's been around for years in this house and I love it. I label everything with it and the labels are waterproof. So I'll put a link below in case you're interested in getting that, not just for this, but for everything. All right, so that's enough of that. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is pour out my white. Now, again, this is white paint, white acrylic paint mixed with Floetrol. You'll see um, I have broken this up into fourths. So I've got one, two, three, four parts to this bottle. Um, I fill up to here with paint and I fill the other one, two, three parts with Floetrol and then that's an easy way for me to just make sure I've got the right ratio. So one part paint, three parts Floetrol. So I'm going to start with my white here. I'm just going to do a little section and my Floetrol looks like I'm missing my brush. Okay, so nothing fancy here. This is just a little chip brush and they're very inexpensive. I'm going to go ahead and just move this around. I probably have maybe half paint, half Floetrol. None of that really matters. So what I'm doing is providing a slip coat here. Um, I'm gonna have it thicker in the section that I'm actually wanting to move and thinner out here. This enables the paint to move and blend together. All right, so now I'm gonna add a little more white kind of in a circle and I'm gonna start adding my colors. This is a folk art steel gray. Like I said, I'll have a list uh, in the description, so you don't have to worry about that. You can do circles, lines, you can do whatever. Um, the fun part to me is experimenting and just seeing, okay, if I pour my paint this way or that way, what can I get out of it? You know, like I'm just gonna pour the yellow a little bit differently. Let me get up in this corner too. I, I also wanna point out 
it's really important to me to get all my edges covered. So if you notice, when I put the Floetrol in the white on, I made sure to get it closer um, to the end and push it off the edge because when it starts to run, I want it to have the fluidity to run off the edge and make it um, a finished edge because I don't want to have to uh, pay to frame this. And that's the other thing. These canvases are 11 by 14. I got them in a two pack at Hobby Lobby for $5.99. $5.99? Yeah. So I paid, or $4.99. So I paid $2.50 each uh, for two, you know, for two canvases. Um, so, and that's the other thing. You want to run your color kind of to the edge because you want it to run off so that you don't have to have the expense of framing this piece if you decide it's not important to you. All right, I'm going to run it this way. These are two different shades of gray. They might look the same on the canvas, I mean on the camera, but they're not. One's a warm gray, one's a cool gray. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make just some, just thin. I don't know if you can see, but these lines are really thin. With my black and my brown. Go a little heavier with the brown. The brown is what's gonna add the warmth. All right, now, second magic trick of the day. I'm going to use my handy dandy blow dryer. Definitely don't use the one that you use for your hair because it gets really messy over here so here we go i'm just blow it in different directions and that's going to allow the paint to kind of layer over each other you'll see it creates magic So if you take a look at that, I mean, that's already really pretty. I'm gonna let it run this direction. Now watch this. You're gonna see it start to run off. It's kind of slow. It's like right up there with watching paint dry, except you get something better in the end. All right, and then I'm gonna try to run it off the other end to the edge. See this edge I'm talking about? Just try to get that finished off. The other thing you might want to consider is wearing gloves. I don't just because, I don't know, I just never get around to, to doing that. I like to be able to feel what I'm doing. But um, this stuff is super messy. So wearing gloves and then also I've got some thick plastic here that I've covered everything with and I can just wipe that up and do another one right after. So as you can see, I'm moving it in all different directions. And that, depending on how you move it, it's gonna make something totally different happen every time. Look at this, look at the movement. It's so beautiful, it looks like natural rock. So now I'm gonna go on to my next section and I'm gonna add some white here. Some more Floetrol, get the edges really good. Make sure I've got it covered. Really cool things happen when you do this in sections like this because as they begin to kind of touch each other, awesome things happen where they meet. All right, so let's go. We went really warm on this side with the, the tans and the golds. So we're gonna go a tiny bit cooler and see what happens over here. And then I'm gonna pour a little white back on top. All right, hair dryer. As you see, I'm blowing to the edge first because I want to make sure that gets covered. If you go this way first, you might not have enough to push off the edge. Okay, so here's a trick. 
This is not moving because I don't have enough on here. Let me show you what gravity does. This is just the Floetrol. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, like I said, Floetrol comes out white, dries clear. So a lot of times you'll think your colors are muted and it dries out and they're very vibrant. So if you're gonna do this little trick, make sure you know that it's gonna change things. That's just to add weight to get it to move. Let's see what this does. Yeah, so now it's starting to move. Here's the other cool thing about this. You really can't let this sit too long because the longer you let it sit, the cooler the stuff happens. I mean, like literally you could sit it there for an hour and I can't look at it because I'll keep touching it if I do, but I've let it sit thinking it was done. And as long as you're, you've got an angle where gravity can move it, it'll be totally different when you come back. It's so amazing. All right, so you see how gravity is creating these lines, and it's because I went in so many different ways with the flow trial, so it's moving it differently. All right, so now, let's see, what do we wanna do here? Let's make this section a little warmer. Okay, I should have added white first. I forgot I wasn't covered there, but that's okay. I'm gonna add it now. And some more flow trial. We're gonna go kind of heavy on the on the um, warm tones here. Sometimes I just kind of outline some shapes with the black. I'm just gonna make a line here. It's gonna do something pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna run it in the opposite direction that I wanna end up. And of course, I didn't do what I told you to do, which is run it off the edge. Oh, looks like it kinda did that already. There we go, good. That's because I put so much paint on. Oh, how cool is that? Look how this is looking. Mmm, liking that a lot. Oh my gosh. The patterns that happen, it's like natural stone. All right, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back in with some white and I'm just gonna kinda connect these two sections. And I am just playing, like literally, and this is flow trial. I don't know what this is gonna end up like, but I, you know, I have an idea from other ones that I've done. But the surprise is always fun. So I'm gonna make this one mostly cool. So we're gonna, we're gonna stay with the grays and the whites and the blacks and maybe a tiny bit of warm. And that's gonna bring these two sections together. Extreme. I'm not sure, but I don't want that harsh piece of white right there. It could be distracting. Okay, 
So again, I'm going to run it the opposite. I'm going to put a little flow trawl here for added gravity effect. <laughs> see what this does. Keep in mind this has nothing to do, well, a little bit to do with the end product, but it's going to be very different. So you have to stay tuned for the end. All right, now I'm going to just run it off a little bit this way. So if you let those lines get wide by going sideways first, it won't be so skinny with the lines in the end. So depending on what you want, if you want that to happen, then just let it stay, you know, narrow. And if you don't, then go sideways first. The great thing about it is, you know, you can play around with it and it's like a, it's like a great experiment. All right, I'm gonna leave this alone for a while. So we're gonna do a little time lapse here. We're gonna speed this up for you. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, this is it. What do you think? I love it. I love how it came out. Let me know what you think. I think I let this sit for about 30 minutes, maybe 25. So we sped it up for you so you didn't have the grueling agony of watching paint dry. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think. And if there are any other projects at all that you would like to learn, we love to teach. So let us know what they are and we're happy to do it for you. I'm Carrie Lawless. Thank you so much for watching.